Hey guys, my name is Derek Duga and I'm a PDI tech here at Primo RV. And today I'm gonna take you through a Puma 32 RKTS. Uh, so we're gonna start on the front. Right here you have an electric jack. On the very front, you have a switch here that's gonna be a light to help you hook up. And you're gonna have a retract and an extend that you're up and down. So what you just seen was the handle if anything were to happen to this jack to where you couldn't get it up or down, it broke, you didn't know how, you needed to get it off the truck, this handle's in one of your storage bins. You would take it out, this rubber cap be on the top, you pull that off, this goes on the inside, and now you can turn it and crank it manually. And you'd be able to get it off the truck. Right here, we have the LP bottles. On the back side, you have a switch over. So there's a little arrow, and whichever way that arrow is showing is what bottle you on. There is a green and a red selector here. When it's red, that's saying you're empty. So what you want to do is close that bottle, turn it over to the other bottle, turn that bottle on, and now you're ready to go again for your LP. Here is your battery. This is going to run all your 12 volt. Um, this is not maintenance free, so you're gonna every once in a while you're gonna want to pop, pop these caps off and add distilled water just like you would to a car. So this right here, what we have on the front is this is a little solar prep. Right here, you can see the sign. What it is is you could buy a solar panel. It would plug up into here. So if you did a lot of dry camping in the woods or deer camp, what this would do would it would charge your battery. Uh, and we keep all your 12 volts going. Um, also, I know some people that use it, they'll plug it up uh, because they're not hooking up to shore power while they're saving it. So you could also put your solar panel here and use it as a trickle charge for your battery. So here on the front side, this compartment door, um, when you open it up, you can see this is where your washer and dryer would go. If you wanted one, you have washer and dryer prep in here. Uh, if not, you choose not to go with it, from the inside you open the closet door and this would be a big closet that you could use. So here we have our stabilizer jacks. This control, this will control both jacks at the same time. So sometimes you have one arm come down before the other. That's okay, once it touches the ground, it will stop and allow the other one to catch up just like it's doing now. And now it's caught up. So one thing about these is you cannot pick up this camper with these jacks. Um, you only want to use them to stabilize it. So if you're in a spot that's real off level, front to back, uh, it's real easy because you're going to use your electric tongue jack in the front. But left to right if you're off, you're going to have to roll it on blocks. Once you get it leveled that way, now you come down with your stabilizer jacks and it stops the camper from rocking. So here on the back side, this is where your back jacks are. It'll be the same thing as the front. If one comes down, the other one will catch up. Sometimes they come down together. So as, as they come down, if you're in a spot that's really low, I would suggest that you put four blocks, one on each jack, because what happens is if the arms come down too far to the middle, once they touch, you're not holding anything. So you would want to put blocks so your jacks are more to the side, which would stop the camper from rocking. Okay, so the second handle I'm going to show you is if these jacks ever stop working for any reason, on the opposite side of the motor, so this is the off-door off side of the camper, this is the one you're going to use. You're going to have a groove. This is going to go into here and now you can turn it and pick these jacks up manually. So the third handle that's gonna come with the Puma, um, this is how you're gonna bring in your slides if something ever happens to where you can't get them in. So on this particular model, if you look, there's a hole here. If you go straight through here, you have a connection. This is gonna go in and connect to that. And what that does is it's gonna bring your slide in on the opposite side, so this one you're gonna roll it in, it's gonna bring in the slide on that side this way. If you have another slide on that side, it would do the same thing. 
When it comes to the slides, y'all, there's really one, only one thing. Do you want to be all the way out and all, or all the way in? Reason why is you have a bulb seal on the outside and a bulb seal on the inside, and that's what seals it from the rain. So if you're in between, it's gonna leak. Now, one thing I do like to say is, this is your wiper seal. This is what wipes the water off. If you close your slide on a morning that it's raining, okay, um, and you close it, when you get home, you're probably gonna have a little bit of water inside of the camper because this is not gonna 100% wipe all the water off. That's okay, just open it up, wipe up the little bit of water, that does not mean you have a leak. And then dry it up and you'll be ready to go for next time. So here's your hot water heater. Um, on this particular model, your electric, to run this hot water heater on electric, your switch is gonna be on the outside, so here, Right now it's off. So this is how you're going to turn on your hot water heater on electric. This right here is the anode. So once, twice a year you're going to want to check this. Uh, this is what sends out a electronic charge in the water and it, all the metal particles will come to this so eventually it rusts and you have to take it out to change it. Now if you ever drain this for any reason you want to make sure you turn this off because you want to hook up your hose, fill this back up with water before you turn your electric on because if not, you have your heating element uh, dry firing and you'll burn it up. Okay, so right here, this is where you're going to fill up your fresh water tank. So if you're going anywhere where there's no water where you could connect to this camper, you put your hose here, you would fill it up with fresh water. When the water comes out, you're full. Okay. Then on the inside, you would put on your water pump, which I'm gonna show you once we get on the inside, that'll push water through your camper. Now once you get home and you're done, if you still have water in here, underneath here, this valve here, you just turn this, and that's how you would drain the water that's left over in your tank, and now you're empty. This right here is where, if you're running your heater in the wintertime, this is where your exhaust is gonna come out. So this is gonna be really hot. Don't let any kids or anyone touch it. Don't put any chairs or tables, anything that could melt. Uh, one, another important thing that I see a lot is, in the winter time, the kids at the campground like to come in front of it, cause it's warm. But uh, just remember that this is carbon monoxide coming from your propane, so this is hazardous to the kids. So one thing about Puma is, a lot of them, the newer ones are coming in, they're adding ladders on them. Uh, which is really nice. This one's rated 300 pounds. You can get up on the roof, check your roof, make sure everything's sealed. You are backup camera ready on this unit. So if you did want a backup camera, it is wired for it. All you have to do is purchase the camera and we'll put it on for you. On the back, here's your 50 amp hookup. It's a twist and lock. All you do is plug it in, turn it, screw it on, and you're ready to plug up to shore power. Right here, once you get to the campground, whatever you're running, this top one, this would be your satellite hookup, and the bottom would be your cable. And the cable would be the same thing like your house. The black cable with the little twist turn, you'd hook it up to their cable, plug it up to here, that would feed your whole camper. So here on the back side, this compartment, uh, this is actually underneath the booth from the inside. So if there's something you needed to get from the inside, you could put in this compartment, keep this lock and you could actually pick it up from the inside and get to it from the inside. This front compartment here will be the same thing. This is underneath your bed. So if you had anything you needed to get at nighttime or you could put it in here and once we're on the inside I'll show you, you could pick up the bed and get to it from the inside also. So not all models have this but this particular model does. You're gonna have an outdoor shower here. So you have a little, you can pull it out. It's an on and off. You do have hot and cold water. So if the kids get muddy, you can wash them off. Or if you have big pots to wash, you can do that out here. It'll hang up here or you can close it. On top, this one right here would be your city water. So once you get to the campground, from their water, this is where you would hook up your water hose and it would feed your camper. The one on top, is a black tank flush. So once you're done camping and you dump all your tanks, you would take your hose, hook it up here. When you turn your hose on, the pressure, you have a wand in the black tank on top, it spins 
and it washes out your black tank, leaving your black tank real clean. That way you don't have any smells. So here's where you're gonna hook up your sewer line. Now in this model, you're gonna have two of them. You have one here, you're gonna have one in the rear. Um, this one here, this is gonna be a gray pool, this is a black pool. Gray pool on this one, this one is gonna be your bathroom. So this is gonna be your shower and your sink. Okay, this one here is gonna be your toilet. In the back, you're gonna have another gray and that's gonna be just your kitchen sink, that's gonna be your galley. So you're gonna have two gray pools and a black on this one. So you'll have a black, a gray one, and a gray two. Now once you get camping and you run your holes, um, it's okay to pull the gray handle and the gray handle in the back and let that drain all the time because all that is is soapy water. But this one here is your toilet. What you don't want to do is leave that dry because what happens is toilet paper and your other business gets stuck on the bottom and when it does decide to give, it'll clog up all of this and it makes it not fun. So the best thing to do is keep this close, watch your level on the inside. Once you get to about two thirds almost full, you want to come out here, you want to pull this handle and you want to dump it. And if you'd like, use your black tank flush and clean it. If not, close it back, go back on the inside, flush your toilet and hold it, put more water in your tank, that way nothing sticks to the bottom. So here's the one I was telling you on the back side. This is going to be your galley. This is your other gray. So you, it, it's really up to you how you want to run it. You can either run a Y. You're going to have to run one here and over there. The two will meet and then you run out. Or you can run one from the main. Watch your levels on the inside and take your hose from here and dump it. It's really up to you. Um, but this will be one gray and a gray and a black in the front. So here we are on the inside, we are in the master bedroom. As you can see, in this model you have a lot of storage, a lot of cabinet. This is where you can get to it from under the bed that I showed you on the outside. It's got shocks so it'll hold it up. That's really nice. Here is where your wash and dryer prep would be in this closet. So you would set up your wash and dryer here. If not, you just use it as a big closet. You can hang your clothes, storage, anything you need. Here is going to be your second air condition. So the air condition in this bedroom, you're going to control everything from it on here. So you're going to put it high, low here. This does not have heat. So this is air condition only. This one is going to dump just in this room. So this one is not ducted like the front one is. So when you turn this one on, it'll dump just in here. And uh, you can adjust your vents to where you want the air blowing. On this side, if you're going to hang a TV in this room, this sticker here, try to stay as center of this sticker as you can. There is a backer in the wall. So if you get off of this too much, you might miss it. Stay there. On top you have your 110 and your cable plugs here. Now this unit has the new style antenna. It's a king antenna. And this is here. So the way you're going to use this, there's no more crank up and crank down. You have to turn it like you did on the old ones. Once you hook up your TV, if you're not running cable, all you're going to do is press this button on this side. You're just going to spin it till you catch the best station that you can. You'll leave it there. So when you're leaving, you don't have to remember to bring it down. It's going to sit right where it's at. It makes it really nice. You won't hit anything and have to buy a new antenna. So here, this is your smoke detector. So this is going to run off a 9 volt, just like it would in your house. So every once in a while, test it. Make sure your battery is good. If not, you're going to want to change it. Down here is where your propane sniffer is. So this is wired directly to your battery. So if you don't hook this up to shore power and you leave it for a while, when this battery gets to a certain level, it will make it go off to let you know that you're about to not have battery and this won't work. Uh, one thing I like to say also is these, these are sensitive. So if you spray Lysol or some perfume that's real strong, it will make this go off sometimes too. So be careful what you spray around this. So this here is going to run your front AC um, and also your furnace. So it's going to be just like the old style house. You have cool and heat, auto, lower fan, and you adjust your temperature. 
So in the bathroom, pretty easy. On the wall, you're gonna have a, two switches. One's gonna be your light, the other one's gonna be your fan, and you're gonna have a manual crank up for the vent. Now one important thing in the bathroom is before you leave, you wanna make sure that this shower door is latched open. If not, when you leave, if this slams closed, we'll break the shower door. So this is the rear kitchen. Uh, as you can see, there's plenty of cabinets. You have a big pantry here, put plenty of stuff in it. One thing Puma did on their new ones is they went from a ice box that is LP and electric and they went straight electric. So now what they do is if you need to turn off your ice box, you have a switch here, which is gonna turn you on and off on your ice box. So no more gas on this, this is gonna be straight electric. Here you have your fuse, all your fuses and your breakers. So everything's labeled. And what you need, one good thing is when you open it, there's a little red light under each. So if you have a blown fuse, if the light is showing, that tells you that that fuse is burnt. Not a whole lot of guessing anymore. Makes it really nice. So this is the compartment on the outside that I told you you could get to from the inside. So what you do is take off your cushions. You would pick up this piece of plywood and there is the compartment on the outside. You're gonna have the same thing on the other side. As for storage, just know this table also makes a bed. So it's real easy. All you're gonna do is pick this up. These legs slide out. This table is gonna slide onto these black rails and you use these cushions to fill in the middle. Now the sofa also makes a bed. All you're gonna do is take these cushions off. Grab the bottom, pull it out. You got two legs. It comes down and you fold this down to finish the bed. So here's where you're gonna put your TV. You have a back of here, so whatever TV or mount you're gonna put, um, you're gonna 110 plug, here's your satellite and your TV. The RCA jacks are already ran. The sound bar is going to be your radio, your CD player, and your DVD player. So once you hook this up to your TV, you can play movies through here. This is also Bluetooth, so you can hook it up to your phone. So here's your main control that's gonna control everything in your camper. So here you're gonna have your awning lights. That's gonna be your LED strip on the outside. Here's gonna be your middle lights. These are your porch lights for the outside. So up here, this is your water pump. So if you're going somewhere where there's no water, you're gonna fill up your fresh water tank where I showed you on the outside. Then you're gonna turn this on. That's what's gonna push the water through your camper. Now your electric for the hot water heat I showed you was on the outside, this here hot water, this is gonna turn on the gas side of your hot water heater. So you turn this switch on and it will light itself on the outside. You can run both if you needed hot water quicker. It's perfectly fine to run both. This one here is gonna run in your awning. This one here is gonna run in your slide and this is your second slide. Here is all your level. So this is your battery full. You have a fresh tank. This is your black tank. You're going to have a gray one, a gray two, and then wash. If you would put a wash and dryer sometimes, they will run one for your wash and dryer and this model doesn't have it, but some do. So congratulations on your purchase of your new Puma and I'd like to say welcome to the Primo RV family. Thank you.